been doing for the last months, several months, isn't it? Yeah, so I suppose one of the reasons um, that it's been a little while, both Dad and I usually have to have a minute to do the recordings. And I've been getting ready for my exhibition, which is called Sachi. I'll show you our flyer, my flyer. This is the flyer. It's a sticker. And this is the show information. If you want to read the information, um, you can go to cy-hiroo.jp and that has all of the text and what's going on and they're also going to update when everything goes live with the sales because we're going to be doing online sales. <clears throat> tell us now, tell us the dates, tell us what it's going to be about, everything. Um, so we're opening on the 2nd of July and it finishes on the 24th of July. Sachi, I can show you this actually now, Sachi is actually a Japanese word and this is the character for Sachi and it means happiness and it was a conversation that I've been having with um, my husband when I was trying to come up with a title and he thought it might be nice to have a Chinese character or you know a Japanese character um, or a pictogram um, rather than an English word and because the theme of my show I wanted to be about a real kind of burst of joy after an incredibly intense and stressful period for a lot of people this seemed like the perfect pictogram I love the shape of it I like the symmetry I love the fact that it seems to have a little a central heart with all of these arms and legs or a kind of tree of life with the branches and the roots. And it just sort of had everything I liked um, to explain the show really. And yeah, the exhibition, it's stories predominantly, stories that I feel like are missing in a lot of modern life. Everything has to happen very quickly in a certain amount of characters and is quite frenetic. All of our media is very condensed and uh, chaotic. So I wanted some stories that were longer that people would have to take some time to read and get through while they're looking at the artwork. And they're all stories that for me have been really helpful in coming through difficult times. Um, some of them are about how times of quiet or darkness are actually incredibly important for rejuvenating creativity, whether that's um, art or music or writing or just creating your own life. One of the paintings is the classic story of Demeter and Persephone and about the six months in the underworld and then returning to earth and everything coming to life. The painting behind me is the goddess Ostara and she's where Easter comes from. So she is about spring. I wanted stories about how when we return to the world with lots of people in it, we can make, maintain our sense of self and feel strong with other people. One of the stories I chose for that was the Earl King or the Earl Koenig, which is a story about how a father ignores his son, telling him he's being chased by the Earl Koenig through the forest. And the father says, what you're hearing is the wind. And the boy says, he's chasing us, the Earl Koenig, he's coming for us. And the dad says, it's just the branches catching on your clothes. And by the end, of their trip when they get to the edge of the forest. The Elkernic has taken the sun. And one of the interpretations of this story is that fathers often represent culture in stories, in these old stories. And the idea that culture ignores our intuition, the horse, by the way, that they're riding understands they're being chased and speeds up. So our intuition knows what's good or bad for us. And we might vocalize it, but the father or our culture ignores us. And so I wanted to do a painting, which is the green one over here, where the Earl Koenig 
is a figure who's earthbound, but in a sea of floating, colourful creatures that are us and not attached to him and not beholden to him. So it's all of these stories. Hmm? Can you show us? Yeah. Um, okay, one second. It's not finished. This one isn't finished, but this is the underwater lair of the Earl King or the Merle King, I've called him because he's underwater. This is him here. And I haven't put the people in, but we're gonna be these glowing floating seahorse creatures. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Hmm? I love it. Brilliant. Thank you. I mean, there's tons of it. This was the thing. And this was really why these stories are important because having had the time away from being able to do exhibitions, I don't know if you felt like this, but having one to get ready for, I had so much in my head that had to come out. And I've just been painting and painting and painting. And I think it's partly to do with that time where I couldn't do as much. I couldn't be out there. So I had to mull over a lot of stuff. And then it had to come out. <laughs> well, I actually have had an exhibition since November and it's going to run through to the end of the year. But although I've had an exhibition, um, people haven't been allowed to come to it, <laughs> but they can now. So if anyone wants to see the exhibition, it's at Trading Boundaries and it's on to the end of the year. We should have done this about your show, Dad. Oh, we're doing it about yours. We can do it about mine later. Okay. Um, yeah, I suppose I wanted to mention it in case anybody... I suppose I really wanted to do this show to be a bit of um, a joyful, light kind of storytelling session. And obviously lots of people can't come to Japan, lots of people in Japan can't come to Tokyo. So a lot of it's gonna be online. Um, I'm gonna do walkthroughs where I explain the pieces of artwork and you can buy artwork online as well, as I mentioned. And I really want it to be like all of the live videos that we did before, I want it to be as interactive as possible. I want to tell the stories of the work and I want other people to tell me their stories. If they pick up different stories from the paintings as well, or it reminds them of anything, I'd love to hear about that too. There's so many archetypes in stories and in dreams seem universal. Things to do with flying and horses and family. So I'd be interested to hear different people from different places, interpretations or experiences with the stories that I'm telling in the show. Tell, tell us some basic facts. You said it opens on the 2nd of July. And is it for two weeks? No, it's until the 24th. So it's about three weeks. Three weeks. Good. And give us the address. Okay, the address, uh, if anyone can make it, it's Courtyard Hiro, which is H-I-R-R-O-O, H-I-R-O-O, -O, um, in Nishiazabu, Tokyo. Um, but I can link all of that under me. Do you have that printed out on the poster? Yes. <laughs> Show us. Well, we can put this underneath that. This isn't going to be interesting to say okay. as a thing. <laughs> all right. But I do appreciate you making sure we're dotting the I's and crossing the T's. That's nice. <laughs> I'll put it in the description. Yeah. You told me once that you went to away somewhere for a break and you saw some giant paintings and it really inspired you to basically let go all your ties and go for what you really felt have you managed yeah. to do that yeah i've had the best time getting ready for the show i don't know if there are people watching who are artists and musicians i think like one of the pressures is you have to kind of constantly come up with something new 
that no one's ever seen or heard before or read before or whatever creative thing that you do. And going to see this exhibition was fantastic for me because he sort of does work like mine. Um, it's amazing. And I thought, actually, the thing that no one's seen before is me just doing what I do better. <laughs> so I thought, maybe I'll just plow on, considering I enjoy what I do so much, rather than trying to pick up a whole new, you know, 3D modeling or Joe Mon pottery or whatever crazy thing I was going to try and learn in three months. I just thought, I'm just, I just want to do what I know how to do and really enjoy myself, which I have been. And hopefully that will come across. I think it usually does when people enjoy what they do. Give, give us a clue about how many pieces you've got and what sort of size they are. Um, oh God, Dad, this is so boring. People don't care. Uh, I don't know. I've done about 10 new ones, um, ranging from the small square one you just saw to this size um, and a bit bigger. <laughs> Right. Don't ask for dimensions, Dad. No one cares. Okay. I'll put all of those up. <laughs> all right. All right. You're such an engineer. No, I mean, <laughs> interesting. You've got to get the basics. Right? Actually, one of the, one of the paintings, um, for anyone who didn't see, I put it on my Freya Dean Facebook page, another video explaining this, but one of the paintings is based on the story that you told me when I was little, Dad the ping story about the little girl who would go on journeys with her horse. Right. <laughs> and you told me that story on and on and on and making it up. Um, <laughs> but I had a dream that I had a horse recently. Well, it wasn't mine. It was its own, you know, autonomous sovereign being. Um, and we communicated non-verbally. And um, I remember hearing about Freud's idea of the ego and the id and the ego being like the rider and the id is the horse and our intuition and you know sort of impulses are animal side and I wondered maybe this dream is telling me I'm in better communication with that side of myself I don't know it was a wonderful dream but it also reminded me of the stories that you told me when I was little so I put us in the Himalayas which is where I always imagined those stories were set Ping and her horse Pong <laughs> I'm amazed you remember. <laughs> yeah, of course I do, because also you'd get me little presents, which I always remember. And one of them, this was the thing I think that made it really work, was that you'd be telling the story and then maybe you'd found something like a little brooch and then you'd weave that into the story and then the next day you'd say, look, I found it. And I'd be like, oh, my God, the story's real. <laughs> also, I have a brooch. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little tip for any parents there. I can't remember that. I'm glad you can. Really? Mm. You can't remember? No, I can't remember doing that. <sighs> I remember because I think one of the brooches was a little Thai lady who was dancing. Yeah. And um, yeah. And so you told me the story of Ping meeting a dancer in the mountains. And this was um, her brooch, something like that. <laughs> I didn't realize I was so clever. <laughs> well, maybe I'm, you know. <laughs> <laughs> transposing my own genius <laughs> but I still have the brooch so that's definitely true all right good well keep it up I'm going to just tell you a little bit about my day because um, last week we started in earnest working on the home for life prototype renovating it and of course <clears throat> having said that we had a virtual monsoon <laughs> Still, we've started and I'm going out there today. So for me, that's very exciting. And I hope it will be for you when you come back. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, lots of people have been asking about this because it was something that we were intending on starting over a year ago. And then 
Corona got bad again. And then the guy who was renovating the prototype building got COVID and his wife did. And then winter happened and then, and then, and then. So I think it's good to say, you know, things are happening again. Yeah, very much so. I love your paintings. And hopefully, hmm? I love your paintings and I love the one that's the opposite side to the one you just showed us. Oh, this one? Yeah. Uh, this is a cross section of the world that all of these paintings um, are scenes from. Oh. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing them all. Good, good. I will put up a link so everyone can see everything. Right. Properly. But so with the Home for Life prototype, which we're renovating now, the goal is that when we do classes, art classes again, or if we have workshops, we'll be able to do them in the real architecture, your architecture. Yes, definitely. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Any idea when it might happen, when it might all be done? Well, <clears throat> We've rented the building space for four months. Um, that may not take us through to completion, but it should take us through to completion of the exterior. Hmm. Okay. Wow, this is gonna take a lot longer than I thought. <laughs> well, you know, I'm optimistic we'll do it quicker because the very first one we built, which was essentially four rooms, we built in three weeks. It was- God, why is renovating it taking so much longer? Because we have a lot more detail in it. The first one didn't have doors or windows. It just had archways. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it'd be good to put up some pictures, Dad, if you're getting any pictures of them renovating. Yeah, we're gonna start filming it too. I'll ask Matt if he can come along. Brilliant. Yeah. That will be great. Any other news on your side? I've talked for a long time about my show. No, that's what I wanted to do because um, um, <clears throat> one of the problems with some of the work I've been doing is that um, it's remained essentially secret. But uh, yeah, I wonder if there's one little thing I could show you. Bear with me. <laughs> All right, while well, Dad's doing that, I'll show you my cross section. Just so you're not too bored. So this is my planet. And if you can look closely, here is the molten lava and we've got some volcanoes. Everything is connected to everything else. And this is the, okay, Dad, I'm just explaining my yeah. picture. I could hear you when you were, when I was away. Okay. So this is the um, DBA vinyl. Yeah, that looks fantastic. And it's, um, it's a watercolor. And yeah, you painted that live. So those the videos of you painting that are on YouTube, aren't they? So well, you can better see that. Still, better still, if you buy the CD, this this is a DVD of me painting it. Oh wow! God, that looks amazing inside. It says Roger Dean live painting sessions plus lyrics and videos. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. It's an amazing album as well. So if you're interested in the painting, it's a good way to get it because you get free music. And if you're interested in the music, which is beautiful, you get a free painting session. <laughs> and also, if you want to hear Chris Bray talking with Dad about it and lots of other things, um, that's on our podcast, The Secret Path, and the YouTube channel for Roger Dean. And that's a really wonderful conversation 
about creativity. Yes, I liked. I, really I enjoyed great. that. And the album is out now, so it's it's available now. I've only just got copies, but it has been available for some time. <laughs> so, how many paintings have you not finished? I've not finished most of them. Oh. I think I've only finished two. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you with the rest? I mean, are you going to finish them all? Or are they going to be works in front? I mean, ideally, I've sold one of them. <laughs> so I definitely have to at least finish that one. Um, yeah, I mean, it was suggested I do the whole exhibition like a kind of live painting session and just carry on working on them while I'm in there. But I can't imagine anything more stressful than dragging out this process in front of people. So I think it's going to be some late nights before we open. <laughs> well, you were very good at painting in front of an audience, as I remember. The thing is, though, and I've heard other people say this, if you paint in front of people, it's unbearable having stages where things don't look right. So you're always trying to make sure the whole thing looks cohesive yeah, yeah. at every point, which is not the point of getting it done properly. No, in fact, almost at any point in a painting, it doesn't look right until it's finally right. Yeah. Yeah, so sorry, everyone, none of these are done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hopefully you can get a gist, though. Right. Well, I look forward to seeing them online because obviously I'm a very, very long way away, seven, eight thousand miles and not readily accessible to travel, is it? No, although what's sort of incredible is they've really started rolling out the vaccines now. So maybe people from other parts of Japan are a little bit more flexible to travel around. Um, Finally, but yeah, obviously. I thought Japan was well, the, going to do it. Well, I, so did I. And then suddenly everyone's got a date for when they can turn up and have it done. One of uh, a friend of mine was saying that they think one of the reasons for this is they wanted to make sure they could do everyone before they did anyone. So there wasn't a kind of, you know, two tier medical situation going on. And the two tier one that the rest of the world did was to treat the most vulnerable first. Yes, I mean, they, the, the priority is still over 65 and people working in hospitals, but that was extremely marginal. <laughs> I think it was like 1% of that group. Well, anyway, we're all getting it done now, which is that's great. Brilliant. That's great news. So one day soon, you may be able to travel again. I really, really hope so. I really, really hope so. Yeah. I want to see how everything's going back home and see everybody there. I was thinking too that um, I, I'm hoping to go to America in October. And uh, I've crossed my mind that maybe you could join me there. That would be nice. Where are you going? San Francisco. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will talk about that during the course of this week on the phone. Yeah. Have you got any more things to catch people up on? I hope everyone's doing okay. It's yeah. sort of, it feels like we're all coming out of it a bit now, doesn't it? Things yeah. are sort of easing up a little. Yes. I, I've got a lot to talk about. Let's catch up again next week and see what progress you've made. And I'll talk more about the house and my latest painting. Yes. OK, so I guess what I will say is if people are interested in finding out more information, I will link uh, the website. But if you follow my Facebook page, which is Freya Dean Art and Design, or my Instagram at Freya Dean, F-R-E-Y-J-A-D-E-A-N, 
then you will see me post regularly about where you can watch me do a walkthrough of the exhibition, or you can follow the link to the gallery's website where you can buy things. Um, and that's cy-hiroo.jp. Um, that's sort of all of the information that I need to put across, isn't it? Um, I hope just people will enjoy it though. The whole point of this was really to just be like, let's get out of this funk now and have a bit of a party, even if it can only be online. <laughs> I, I can give you two bits of information that might be a bit of fun. One is mm. um, I'm gonna do another live painting for the new Focus album. I love Focus, so that's gonna be fun. And the other group who I've worked with for 50 years and I love too, Teddy Osei's Osabisa. I'm gonna be doing a new album for Osabisa. So that's gonna be a lot of fun as well. Yeah, you, oh, that's amazing. You work with me on one of their covers. Yeah, I did. And um, I chat with them a little bit on Facebook now and again. Sometimes I see them come up and they seem like such a lovely group of people. Yes. It, well, I'm looking forward to that and I'm starting it, you know, in terms of assembling ideas and playing with them. It's already started. Oh, that's brilliant. That's really nice. Uh, the world's getting there, isn't it? We're all getting there. <laughs> well, love, I'll talk to you during the week, but let's catch up again a week from today. Yeah. Also, if anyone wants to keep an eye on things, we found out that the Olympic torch is being run right by my apartment from because we're near one of the Olympic venues. And so I'm going to be recording that as well and putting that up, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm really excited about. I'm wondering if are, are tons of people going to be there. Is it going to be like a ghost town? I don't know, but I want to see it. <laughs> I, I want to see it. All right. Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you got everything. For yeah. Yeah, thank you everyone. Hope you're well. It's been a long time. We should keep yeah. more regularly now. Yeah, we should. So, I'm going to switch off the recording. Bye. Bye.